Hey again guys, and welcome back. I've got the five requisite packages, so it's time for another mailbag. Starting with the biggest one, this is one times crocodile clip, and that is December 17th to January 15th. It cost me $3.31. Well, uh, it is crocodile clips, but not exactly some electronic ones. So how many do I have in here? Two, four, five, two, four, five. So I have ten crocodile clips, but there's there are these much bigger ones, uh, typically used on automotive batteries. At least you would think so. They've got two uh, crimp sort of possibilities here, but my God, they actually feel cheap. This is not. I thought this was going to be like a a coating of some sort, but it's basically the thickness of heat shrink. I can bring in a battery to see if they'll fit. This is a car battery here and the positive, it does fit rather comfortably. And the negative, which is a different size terminal by the way, it's a bit smaller, also fits comfortably. So I'll be able to use um, car batteries or deep cycle batteries at my workbench if I have the proper clips and clamps. So I'm actually planning on doing some solar panel type projects. And so crocodile clips this size are kind of necessary for those kinds of things. So I figured I'd pick some up. Next one up is this one, which was sort of, uh, I guess, sent through in Canada. Uh, so yeah, this Orange Connects service, they seem to arrive at a common warehouse here and then they get sent domestically through uh, through uh, Canada Post yeah, so in uh, Mississauga, Ontario. I see that uh, often actually. Uh, this one was kind of pricey and since today is January 22nd, uh, I don't actually remember what this is, but I ordered it on New Year's $17.75 that's kind of pricey hopefully I'm supposed to open this on camera oh well that's nothing too special but it is important so this here is oh wow that is not silicone wire I ordered silicone wire, but this feels like PVC. So this is, let me just check, should be 22 gauge. It is 20 gauge wire. And on both. Okay, the black is 22 and the red is 20. Very strange. Um, but yeah, I ordered uh, silicone jacketed wire because, well, I much prefer silicone wire because it's nice and flexible. And I also needed something for general use that wasn't too thick. That's definitely not silicone wire though. That's definitely PVC jacketed. Just stripping a bit off here. Yeah, so it's multi-stranded. Let me get you a little closer so you can take a look at this. Hopefully you can read that. It says uh, 20 AWG, 80 degrees C, and I checked the listing and I did order, so I ordered uh, 20 meters of each, so 60, about 60 feet of each. And yeah, this is, um, the ad does say it's tinned copper. But this doesn't feel like tin copper. It feels more like aluminum. Let me just scrape a little bit away here. When you scrape away at the uh, tinning, you'll typically end up with a ouch, copper color. Mm. 
You could do this with sandpaper too. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a copper color. So this is copper, but this jacket is definitely PVC. Can check out the black one as well. So I don't know if you can see that. This one is 22 gauge. And let's see if we get the same sort of tinned copper. I'll still use it. eBay has changed their policy a little bit. They want you to send back the product, but shipping back to China is pricey. Yeah, looks like I am getting a copper color there. So these guys are copper wire, 60 feet of them in each size. I got a little bit higher gauge of the red than the black. Uh, I'm not going to complain too much. I usually get good deals on eBay. Sometimes you lose. In this case, I think I lost, but at least it's not unusable. I can still use it. It's just not as flexible as I, was, I would like it to be. So this will go into my bin marked uh, assorted lengths of wire. And I will use it. You will see it in future videos. But yeah, a little disappointed about that. Next one up is this guy here. And it is marked cable stripper times one. It cost me a whopping $2. Uh, ordered December 21st, arrived January 15th. Would you look at that? It looks like a wire stripper. Very neat. So it's got a little Allen key here. Very nice. And it seems to have a few different settings. And I can see a kind of a razor blade in there. So this here should be for stripping coaxial cable. How well it's going to, oh, there's two, there's two blades. There's another one there. How well it's going to work, I'm not sure. I wish I had a coaxial cable to strip because I don't. I did order some RG174 and I did not get it in the mail yet. This should pop out somehow because you should be able to adjust it. The RG174 would be in here. But uh, I have to figure that out. Yeah, basically you clamp that around the cable and it's supposed to automatically, uh, as long as these blades are adjusted properly with uh, this, these um, Allen bolts here, it's supposed to be able to just spin this around the cable and it'll strip it for you. I would try it out on that uh, copper wiring I just got, but again, I don't really know how to remove this and adjust it. Let me play with it a little bit and I'll bring you back. Well, after a bit of practice and uh, a little bit of a snack too, um, I think I got this figured out. I found a piece of coax. It was, uh, it was attached to a TV, but you know, who uses coax these days? Um, I think I got the trick. So first of all, this thing comes out by pushing on the backside. So you push on the backside, this comes out and you rotate it to whatever you need and then put it back in. Also there's two blades and this blade is completely straight across and this one here has a notch surprisingly similar to the copper in um, this wire. Um, this thing does not have a cutter per se so you can't cut your coax with this. So I have these little uh, snips here. You have to cut it 90 degrees, so completely flush. It comes in from this side with the lip here. It comes in from the other side. So you put this in like that. And I think there's a certain length you need. Um, I'm not sure what, what that is yet. There's an arrow here. So you just put your finger through here. And I think three turns is ideal. And then you can see there's a cut here. And there's a cut here. So if I just pull this off, 
Okay, so that came off with the metal shielding. And then there's this inner kind of plastic, which I can take off. Oh, this one didn't cut as well. Oh, no, it did. And then there's this little shield here, or this little uh, cut here. You just pull this off, and there's your shielding that you would connect your uh, crimp connector to. So, yeah, it does work. It requires a bit of practice, but they're so cheap. I might, uh, I might get a couple just in case these knives dull. Um, yeah, good to have on hand. Another tool for my collection. Let's go on to the next one. Next one up is this one here, which is one times two in brackets, Chinese characters, um, hundred grams and 20 cents worth, uh, January 1st of January, January 22nd and $4 and 60 cents for this. There's definitely two of something in here. Oh boy. These are some kits. I didn't know I got two of these. Let's take a closer look. So what these kits are, if I'm not mistaken, is actually a high voltage generator. So I have a high voltage generator, um, which I actually put away for the first time in a long time, so I don't have it on hand. But this is a slightly different kind, so it uses a different sort of oscillating circuit. Oh, very interesting. It uses a kind of like a plastic shield, which has been weirdly cut. It's like melted almost. Oh well. Um, yeah, so it uses a different transformer. And it looks like it uses a different chip. The chip is completely unmarked, so no mark on this. It does have a heat sink. So it's an NPN transistor, it just must be a high voltage NPN. So power, we've got a switch, we've got a diode, which is a UF4007. We have um, a resistor and the two coils. I'm not quite sure how that works. Am I supposed to pulse this? There's four wires coming out of here and then two wires coming out of here. I'm not 100% sure how this is supposed to work. It's positive and negative, so it's not like it's a C. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I can't wait to put this together and give it a shot and see if we get some high voltage out of it. That would be quite interesting if we did. This is a very interesting kit indeed. And I thought I only got one. It was $4.60, but I guess they were um, $2.30 each. Very interesting. And the last one for today is this uh, Collet, which is $2 US value. Oh, wow, that's more than two dollars US 1393 it came on January 15th that's not that long ago why don't I remember what it is my knife's getting a bit dull oh I remember what this is now these are back probes so I got a couple of these before, and now I've got a buttload more. So these are just for going uh, sort of inside insulated connectors uh, for automotive use. Um, good for lots of other things too, because you can sort of probe behind these uh, DuPont style connectors. They should fit inside there. And that's good for hooking the scope probe onto the exposed metal bit here. Not sure if they're threaded because it looks like it's actually two 
separate sections? No, probably not. Maybe this just spins loosely on the metal? Nope. Interesting. I'll have to figure out more about that. But these aren't particularly expensive, although for what they are, they're quite expensive. So this was uh, $12, so $13, and I got uh, 20 of them here, I believe. Maybe 10 of them. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 20 of them. So they are more than 50 cents each and really considering what they are it seems kind of pricey but then again finding back probes um, like sort of uh, insulation piercing or probes that go inside automotive connectors from the back these are the cheapest ones I could find in these quantities so kind of stuck paying for it but uh, there we go I got 20 now should be set for a little while and this assortment of stuff makes up today's mailbag once again i would like to say a special thank you to my patreon patrons um, i love the support they give me but not only that they are awesome human beings so if you want to be part of an awesome human being community check out my patreon link in the description below and for the rest of you i thank you so much for coming by watching commenting sort of um, going through the motions with me, and I hope I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.